you know, I've had all kinds of, of amazing experiences <laughs> at the Met. I do have to tell my, my one crazy story from yeah. my first my first winter there, um, we were doing Shostakovich, Lady Macbeth, um, which is an amazing opera. It's extraordinarily powerful to see, and it was really exciting to be part of it. I will say it's an extremely loud opera. <laughs> in the production that we have, which I think is very effective, at, in one scene, the heroine is, she's having a psychological, dramatic moment, and mm -hmm. she's having, in this vision, there are all these brides dancing around with these very old 1950s style metal vacuum cleaners. It's it's a very bizarre, fantastical scene. Yeah. Um, but anyway, a lot of chorus members and supers are up on stage with these huge metal vacuum cleaners. And during a rehearsal, a couple months after I had joined the orchestra, someone somehow lost track of the vacuum cleaner and it rolled down and oh. fell off the stage and into the pit and landed oh, like no. right right between me and the piccolo player and the harp. Oh my Very goodness. Good. Easily could have hit my head or my <laughs> cello or, oh, um, no. and it was, it was in the middle of like a very loud place and I was already, yeah. That yeah was, but how was your cello? I'm <laughs> just kidding. Was, we were fine. I mean, it, it amazingly didn't actually hit a person or an instrument. It kind yeah. of fell in the space. So oh, but it was, I was still a little bit in shock. I had to go take a little walk. And, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. But, you never um, know what'll fall off the stage. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, things do fall off the stage somewhat Quite often, often, but this, this was a larger, heavier object yeah, than usually like falls that. off the stage. So. Oh my goodness. That's definitely a crazy story. I got yeah. a lot of text messages from my section and I, I saying, are you okay? Sorry, this yeah. doesn't usually happen. And um, actually the person who, the chorus member who was pushing the vacuum cleaner sent flowers and apologized. So. Oh. But I, I was fine. It wasn't, yeah. it was not hurt off. So. It seems like, I mean, this was your first season, right? These yeah, kind of things right. happen to everyone in their first season. <laughs> Never know. Comes with the drama. Yeah. And uh, this question is really difficult probably to answer, but what's your favorite opera to play? And what's your favorite opera in general? What's If you're out listening in the audience, what's your most memorable one? Oh, it's hard because we have such a great repertoire. I mean, we have so many amazing ones. Um, I love, I, I played Don Carlo in one of my first seasons and um, Verdi oh. Don Carlo, that's definitely one of the great ones. Otello also I love, there's so many great Verdi operas. I love The Ring, um, Dr. Demering in particular. I haven't played Vakura yet, but um, mm -hmm. I love I love watching that one and, and I'm sure I love playing it too. There's so many, I mean, I love playing some of the great Mozart operas. I love Pelias, I love some of the, some of the Puccini's are just so much fun to play and the music seems so, it kind of feels like it follows life in such a satisfying way. So I, I don't know. Um, I couldn't choose just one, but just everything. But I, I will say that I feel extreme, extremely lucky with the repertoire yeah. and getting to know it so well. Um, it, it's intimidating at first because they're so long, the books are so thick to get through. And, yeah, you know, but, sure. um, but as it becomes part of you, I think it's something that's I'm so grateful for. Oh, everything. <laughs> everything. Um, I miss the music. I miss our call. I mean, you know, it's it's a community of people, and I, I just, you know, I miss seeing all those. I feel like I've been uprooted right. from my from my people, and but also the experience of being in the moment and striving for excellence, of of reacting to people who are so inspirational, our colleagues and the singers and the conductors, and I think that the ability to play music at such a high level to give audiences these experiences that. You know, it's it's not just entertainment. It kind of raises our level of experiencing of our lives, and I think it's such a valuable thing. And to be able to offer that every night is is just an incredible thing, and something that I miss more than I even thought I would. I, I knew I would, but you know, it's it sort of feels like a part of myself that's not there. It's very hard right. to be away from it. So. For sure. Uh, don't give up on music. We <laughs> need music more than ever right now, and I think you know there are so many challenges in how we interact with our audiences right now, but I believe that music is not going to die out because of this. You know, we're going to find ways. Um, eventually, we'll get back into concert halls and, and the opera house. And I think now, but always musicians, as they start off in a career, should be thinking creatively and open-mindedly about all the different ways to make music. I think for all of us, it's, it's fruitful to think about all the different ways we could make music, you know, not might be with an orchestra job but for me it's been really wonderful to play in an orchestra and play some chamber music as well and run a festival and do all kinds of different projects I think it makes you a better musician I think it makes your life more interesting and it gives you options when the opera is not playing then to do something else I, it's, it's sort of the modern way I think that we don't just do one thing but that we if you can find in yourself your inclinations towards different kinds of projects or whether it's recording or people who've gotten really good at video editing or 
working together to put together tracks to, to layer them properly to make a Beethoven ninth finale or you know mm -hmm. things that you may not have imagined as you were in conservatory that you would do but skills that can be externally useful going forward and in in making a career which which will have twists and turns and for all of us that's always been true and now is even more at the forefront but that ability to be flexible and creative and think of new ways to do it that's what we need we need that in the music field that's true. And I hope that all these new young people will bring, you know, having grown up into the profession in these times that they'll perhaps have even fewer limitations on how they think about music performance than I do or, you know, my generation does. We've experienced it the way we've lived it, um, but some people will come to it from a new perspective. And I'm hopeful that that will give our field many possibilities that we haven't even thought of yet. So. Yeah.